ladies and gentlemen, owing to the fast actions of our contact tracing teams, both of these two new cases were detected securely in isolation. So there's a very low risk the virus was transmitted to others. I want to break down for everyone watching why that is, why that is so important. Despite the enormous complexity of our security measures, our game plan to rid our nation of coronavirus is actually very simple. We have to and are breaking the chain of viral transmission. Right now, there are four important cases of coronavirus in Fiji. And based on those four important cases are four clusters that we're beginning to see play out. Two of these cases appear to have done everything right. The woman in Nandi and the gentleman in Andera Suwa. These two Fijians isolated themselves and kept others from harm by following the rules, being honest, and immediately entering self-quarantine, they likely broke the chain before it began to grow. The other two cases, both had wider contact with the public. They infected others, adding links to their chains of transmissions. By, but once we identified these cases, we went about breaking those chains by immediately identifying and quarantining all of their close contacts. With every contact we account for, we break a transmission chain and we keep Fiji ahead of the spread of the virus. But if any link is missed and that individual remains out and about infecting others, that chain will grow and grow until we are faced with a Fijian epidemic of coronavirus. That is why it's so important that everyone stays at home. Whether you are the one with the virus or are the one that may have a virus or you are the person without a virus, we must all stay home. Anyone can catch this disease. Anyone can carry this disease. Anyone can start a new chain. So stay at home and save lives. Do not, partake, do not participate in any social events. Even something as intimate as grog session among friends. If a person does not live in your home, do not interact with them socially. Our Honorable PM has said that our essential health workers are heroes for their role in dealing with COVID-19. But I want to stress that it's not just the virus they're dealing with. They are still responsible for the normal day-to-day -day health needs of our country. The mothers are giving birth, and they are there for them. The kidney patients receive dialysis, and they're there for them. There's people turning up that need emergency operations. They're there for them. There are Fujians that have heart attacks, and they are there for them. Every medical need that you can think of and all this responsibility on top of helping contain a global pandemic puts our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and all those healthcare workers under immense pressure. We have enough, worry, enough to worry about already without those who are breaking quarantine or violating curfew. So stop making it difficult for them when they're working so hard to save you and save the all Fijians in the work that they do in the coal phase. Is there any questions from the media? Good afternoon, Minister. Thank you for your hard work. Um, I'm curious about your contact tracing or any other kind of work that you're doing in the north, particularly in the Savasavu and maybe Taveuni area. Can you confirm for us whether or not your team or the military team are conducting contact tracing in the area. Do you have, for example, some government schools being cleared out to prepare for isolation? Thank you very much. There's uh, two questions in your question, uh, Ms. Mohana, but I'll start with the first part. With the contact tracing, we are doing contact tracing in the north. There's quite ex extensive, as you're aware, uh, that, the, that the patient in the north the, that began the cluster in the north he went across and he went across on the boat, obviously. But certainly there was um, more than about 100, there was about 130 something individuals uh, that uh, our people in the north had to find. Majority of them were in the Madhuata area, some in Dakunrov and also in Tabuni. All the um, uh, contact tracing teams in all these areas uh, have uh, contacted uh, those individuals that need to be contacted. Remember again, with contacts, you have the direct contacts and also what may seem like indirect contacts. As many as possible they have contacted. There's a few that uh, we are told that hopefully by this evening they would have cleared. That is no different from his contacts that have been also in the Suba area. 
uh, as you are aware that we have put out a call out for those who uh, may have uh, uh, attended uh, the, uh, the, the, hair, the, the hair salon in which the couple have, had worked. Um, that has worked very well. People have contacted us, our contact tracing teams have been on to them. I also want to share that government uh, had, had purchased through the Ministry of Health a software which is a couple of hundred thousand dollars that we've bought from Germany specifically that is very specific for contact tracing that is able to help our people on the ground. So we have, um, uh, you know, at the last count more than 50 tablets that we are using. They uh, have people that have provided training and this sophisticated software is helping us in being able to pinpoint and again using just special information, especially those we, who we have contact, contacted, where they are, and then logging them into our system so that we keep count of all those who are contacts of all the patients that we have. Again, going back to the clusters that we have, so we have the first cluster, uh, which of course we're talking about is the, that person has a lot of uh, contacts that we are looking at, that we are following. Also, the um, uh, you know the, the 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 cluster that's based out of uh, um, of Lambasa, but uh, the other two clusters, the the patient from Nandi and the patient from Nandiana, they have very small contacts or indirect contacts. For the Nandiana case, it's about 12, so it's not too difficult from our perspective to be able to uh, see them on a regular basis and make sure that they are not having any symptoms. Having said that, those who have symptoms have been tested and so far they have all been negative, apart from those who have now shown up to be positive. Uh, Minister, congratulations on completing the contact tracing on the, the first uh, uh, few patients you uh, listed. Can you tell us how many people, how many contacts did you actually trace? Uh, and can you break them down by patient? If, if that's difficult for you to say right now, maybe could the, min the media be sent that uh, the information is, is uh, I think, critical for the public. Uh, you didn't confirm. Do you have facilities, government facilities in Savo Savo and Taveoni being prepared and Lambasa too, being prepared to take on patients? Thank you. So, um, yes, we have. So in terms of the patients, um, those who may be symptomatic and are confirmed, we'll, uh, those who are symptomatic, we keep them in the hospital setting until we get the test back. The test is positive, we keep them there, certainly. But for those who are negative, we can then treat them symptomatically because basically they may have had the common flu and then they're able to go back to self-isolation, for example, just to make sure that we're not missing anything. The commissioners, are, again, as I've stated before, this is a whole of government approach. The commissioners that are in charge of the divisions on behalf of government have worked with the divisional medical officers and also the divisional, for example, education officers, the divisional agricultural officers, identifying some facilities that we have in all divisions, in every town, and in, um, in every community, and identifying uh, those places that we can use. As I've alluded to, we have a list that we continue to increase uh, week by week of isolation facilities. We're also making sure that we provide the appropriate um, lodgings, so in, for example, bedding, mattresses, and those type of things. At the moment, uh, certainly, um, there may be challenges in being able to find enough beds, but we're going right around to make sure that we are on top of that. We want to be, as I've alluded to before, it's a layered approach and we want to be two steps ahead at all times. So places like Sabsavu, places like Taviuni, they will have identified isolation facilities that we want to use. Um, sir, after we recorded our first case on March 19, there were about um, more than 70 flights that came into the country. Would you be able to tell us how many of these uh, passengers that came on these flights you have, the ministry has uh, traced? What percentage? So that, that particular flights in which the persons of interest have come on, they are of significant interest for us. We make sure that we visit those people on a daily basis. You also must be aware that uh, since last uh, weekend or the weekend before that, we have governed designated facilities where we've put Fijians that have returned and we're watching them over the 14-day period. Uh, the other thing that we've done is actually uh, made sure that all those, for example, who are on the other flights that are not of interest. So remember, there are only certain flights in which the four came in, the four that began the clusters in Fiji. Those are the ones that we watch with interest on a daily basis. All the other flights that, uh, that have come in, we also watch them. So we do random checks on those individuals that have to be in self-isolation. But again, this is what I keep on talking about. We need responsibility of everyone. We can't be there all the time. Police can't be there all the time. 
people have to take responsibility. If they are asked to self-isolate and self-quarantine, they need to do that. And we, as neighbors, need to make sure that they are staying in their home. So, for example, if you're a neighbor, somebody and you know has come back recently and supposed to be in self-isolation, if they move out of their house, please call us. Please call the police. That's what I keep on talking about in terms of responsibility of the nation. We all have to practice leadership and, and responsibility. We need the doctors and nurses to be able to deal with the acute events. We can't have our healthcare workers standing 24 hours looking after our house. And that's why we need responsibility of everyone in being able to make sure that our game plan works. So considering that um, four of the 12 uh, um, of the 14 cases had imported the virus from abroad, um, does government regret uh, not setting up designated uh, quarantine facilities earlier, especially for the first case and uh, the one that recently returned from India on March 22nd? It has been a very dynamic situation. And if you look at all the governments around us, they did not set up quarantine facilities until the same time that we did. No other government did. So everywhere around the world, and again, I keep on saying this, what the, Dr. Takeshi Kasai said is very interesting. That's an important thing to talk about. No one has had COVID-19 before. So no government can say that they're doing everything right. What is important, that you're looking back all the time to see how you can improve the things that you have done. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my question is uh, in relation to the fact that uh, we still don't have a cure for this virus. And does the ministry has a calculation on when really does the virus survive for how long in an infected person? And also, uh, if there's a protocol in place that the ministry will follow to ensure that these infected people are released back into society at a time that they are not uh, a danger to the general public. Thank you very much. So the process that we have in place. At the 14th day, for a person who's uh, COVID-19 positive, we test them. And then they, we keep them again for another seven days to the 21st day, and then we test them again, and we repeat the test over 24 hours before, and they are both negative, and then we then give a certification of release. Now, for those who are in self-isolation and self-quarantine, it is important for them to contact us when their 14 days is over. We must give their certification before they leave the house. Thank you. So it's not for people who are possible COVID-19 patients, but for those who are, who are already infected with the virus. Yeah, so those who are positive, so they stay with us for 21 days. At their 14th day, we test them, and then they get tested again at the 21st day. And if they're negative, we repeat the test in 24 hours. If it's negative again, and then we get a certificate of clearance. And again, that's not something that... Uh, that we've just conjured up. It's something that's been practiced in other jurisdictions in which we work with, and also the advice given by WHO. Okay, so I'm Shanil from uh, Legend FM. With the approaching weather system, is there a plan in place if people need to be evacuated into evacuation centers? Yes, we're working very closely with uh, all arms of government, the commissioners. Uh, we have a daily briefing, and in that briefing, we are connected to the commissioners and director in DMO. We understand that there are challenges, and again, the Honorable Prime Minister has alluded to, we now have two threats. We have the natural threat and also the virus threat or the pandemic that's before us. We need to, so all arms of government are working hand in hand, and we've been working hand in hand ever since, for example, ever since the measles, and then we had the cyclones, and now we're working hand in hand again around COVID-19. So the communi communications have been happening. The, the, commissions, the commissioners are working hand in hand with their... Uh, uh, with the, the, the divisional heads on the ground to ensure that we are making sure that we have isolation facilities that we have for those with COVID-19, those we need to isolate, and also those who need to be evacuated. So what are the confirmed ages of uh, patient 13 and 14? So at the moment we have uh, 14 cases. We have two that are below 21, and we have three, I think, that's, uh, that's above uh, 40 and we have the rest in between 21 to 44. About 45 and the rest in between 21 to 44. So it's about nine or 10 between uh, 21 to 44. Now if you look at that data, it's a bit different from what uh, other countries are showing. But again, our data is small, so we, c we cannot read much into it if you want to take it from a statistical angle. I think the most important thing to realize at the moment is that we have a more of a younger population. 
So, um, last time you mentioned that you were bringing in ventilators. Have they come in uh, more ventilators? Have they come in into, into the country? The last lot of ventilators have come in. Uh, we're working hand in hand with Fiji Airways to making sure that uh, in their freight flights we begin we are begin continue to bring our equipment and other um, you know the uh, uh, PPEs in all the other things that we will need. It's not normal times, so our people are you know obviously making sure that we connect the dots and ensure that. Uh, you know, we get the flights to bring them in. And having said that, as I said, it's not easy. But we're very thankful for the support that Fiji Airways is giving us. Um, so uh, the sixth and seventh case with the hairdressers, have everybody in contact uh, been uh, traced? Yes, they have, for the moment. But again, we put out a call for those that uh, have been to the hairdressers. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, sir, um, is the government going to consider software to where people can be, people's isolation, self-isolation can be measured? No, not at the moment. Not that I know of. No, William. Sorry, um, just one quick question. Um, just want to confirm whether the Lambasa College dormitory has been established as an isolation facility in the north. And if it's the case, would you be able to tell us how many people are currently in that particular isolation facility? Yeah, as I've alluded to, we, we, we are looking at all the government facilities that are at hand and uh, also including those facilities that are near, uh, you know, where we have uh, population densities. I know that Lambasa College is an area of interest for us. How we are using it at the moment is not, uh, I cannot clarify that at the moment, but I can assure you that that's a place that we've identified. Nak.